Let's talk about post-traumatic epilepsy. So roughly 4% of epilepsy is secondary to traumatic brain injury, and especially in teenagers and young adults, traumatic brain injury is a common cause of epilepsy. A distinction needs to be made between seizures that happen within the first week of a traumatic brain injury and seizures that occur afterwards because there are different treatment implications for each. So seizures that occur within the first week of a traumatic brain injury are called early post-traumatic seizures and these are considered to be acute symptomatic seizures or provoked seizures and are therefore not considered epilepsy which would require long-term seizure medications. Seizures occurring over one week out from a traumatic brain injury do represent post-traumatic epilepsy and are treated with long-term seizure medication. So risk factors for post-traumatic seizures typically include more severe injuries such as depressed skull fractures, subdural hematoma, and intraparenchymal hematoma. Penetrating head injuries are also prone to cause seizures. For clinical features, early post-traumatic seizures, which happen in the first day, are typically generalized tonic-clonic semiology, and then for the rest of the week, they're a little bit more likely to become more focal seizures. And for post-traumatic epilepsy occurring over seven days out, these are typically presenting with focal seizure symptoms. The workup for a post-traumatic seizure is fairly straightforward. In the acute phase, a CT scan or MRI of the brain should be done to identify and treat an underlying cause. Years out from a traumatic brain injury, it may be more prudent to do an MRI simply because the further out from a traumatic brain injury you are, the less likely it is that the brain injury is what caused the seizure, and so you may have to identify other underlying lesions. An EEG should be done if there is suspicion for an ongoing non-convulsive status epilepticus, which can be especially more common in children. And a video EEG should be done if there is suspicion for psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. Other workup includes the basic chemistries as well as a toxicology screen. For treatment, anti-seizure medications used for prophylaxis can reduce the incidence of early post-traumatic seizures, but does not reduce the incidence of post-traumatic epilepsy, meaning that these medications are typically only used for a week or maybe a few weeks. Early post-traumatic seizures can be given short-term anti-seizure treatment, the optimal duration of which is unknown. It is clear, however, that post-traumatic epilepsy requires long-term seizure medications specifically because those seizures do tend to recur at a high rate. Alcohol cessation should be recommended because there tends to be an increased incidence of alcohol withdrawal seizures as well in these patients. For prognosis, Status epilepticus should be treated as a medical emergency in acute TBI, and it carries a high mortality. And patients with early post-traumatic seizures, unfortunately, are more likely to develop epilepsy.